This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Thanks, Jay. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. It's the sound. It's the sound of the aina. It's the sound of the wind and the ocean. It's the sound of that old Hawaiian love. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 What were the words? What do they mean? Uh, the song is titled Hi'ilave. It's a somewhat of a standard nowadays. It tells the story of the Hi'ilave waterfalls in the Waipio Valley, and it's a thousand feet deep. In depth, so um, it's a love story, um, as most Hawaiian songs are. Yeah, you know, it tells about the beauty of the area in comparison to someone's love for them. Yeah, I really love it. Yeah, I love your stuff. So I'm gonna start the show now. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. good idea. It's Bobby Hall. <laughs> so welcome to Community Matters on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Our show today is called Hawaiian Music Can Be an Export Product. And we're going to talk about you know, how we can recreate the Moana phenomenon, oh. the Webley Edwards phenomenon in the 30s and the 40s, how we can work on doing that, and how we can make it more prosperous for Hawaiian musicians. You know, so if you want to make a, make a comment or ask a question, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 808-374-2014. And if you haven't figured it out, our guest for the show, as before, is Bobby Hall, uh, an original member of the Peter Moon Band. Still carries it with him every moment, yeah. <laughs> so there was a time when Hawaiian music was distributed and it was well known around the world. And that led to long-term popularity for the islands. It brought tourists here in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Hawaiian music was an essential part of the brand and, and the hotels promoted it themselves on their own money. In recent years, more recent years, however, the hotels have left it to others to promote, and that takes money the musicians don't always have. So, <coughs> we've had a renaissance in recent years, <clears throat> including uh, bands like Peter Moon, the Peter Moon Man, and many others, 
But we need to get the word out to the world, maybe as before. And, and the question is, should we do that? How can we do it? What role does um, you know, the business of music, tourism, HTA, the government play in getting global recognition for Hawaiian music? So Bobby Hall is good for this discussion, one of the original members of the Peter Moon Band. He's been involved in Hawaiian music and the Renaissance for most of his life. He'll tell us about his experience and his views Maybe he'll even play another couple of songs. We can get him to do that. Welcome again to the show, Bobby Hall. Yeah. Hello, James. Yeah, great Hello. to have you here. So how right or wrong am I in my historic understanding of Hawaiian music, say, mm, you know, from the time of statehood? Yeah. You know, from a timeline, you're, you're, you're correct. From a timeline perspective, um, by no means am I an expert in Hawaiian music or the various genres that uh, take place now. But um, from my upbringing, you know, Hawaiian music was, the, I guess the term I use was hapahali music that uh, became popular in the 30s, 40s, got exposure through big band, probably Hollywood, uh, to the extent that Hawaii became a destination and it also became, you know, something that people envision as paradise, yeah. um, accompanied by the land, the water, you know, the, the weather, and the music, you know, and the hospitality of the Hawaiian people. Yeah. It's so, all in there. It's, it's all, all in there. See it's, it all, feel it's, it all. Yeah. It's everything that someone wishes to, you know, to be part of. Yeah. Um, music took its, you know, to me, it, 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 it sort of morphed into what was happening around the rest of the world, yeah. big band music. Yeah. Um, couldn't really do traditional Hawaiian music, chants, you know, um, hulas and things like that because I don't believe the rest of the world outside of Hawaii was, was ready for that. Yeah. So it took a direction of its own. You know, Hawaiian music, uh, the perception of Hawaii, you know, was ingrained in people. Grass shack, on the beach, hula skirts, diamond head in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy without a shirt and a lay playing ukulele, yeah. you know, and, and, and romance. There was and, romance and love and romance. In all of yeah, that. I mean, you know, it's, it's from a state of mind. You're looking for something that, you know, is like, um, you know, if you want to make, you know, on a vacation, you want to just, you know, have all the good things come out of your your mind and your body. Yeah. And, you know, it, it it got people there. Yeah, yeah. It gave people that that feeling. Yeah. 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 And, and it was, uh, you know, from the courtyard of the Moana Hotel that was broadcast, uh, Webley Edwards figured out, to his credit, right. how to hook it up <clears throat> to the whole country. <clears throat> and he did. And everybody listened to it. They liked it. They liked the romance of it. They liked the, the sound of the islands. And they came. They came by the carloads. You know, um, well, whether it's just the United States or the rest of the world, that was the primary mode of communication at that time. You know, yeah. your radio... Your TV with six channels, you know, and <clears throat> whoever promoted their venue, they had a pretty much captured audience. So you could count on the Webley Edwards show being there for your Hawaiian niche for the for the week, you know, and and, and people look forward to that, yeah. you know. Um, fast forward today, you know, you got a, a million stations, you got you know all kind of stuff. So there's there's a multiple choices whether that's good or not. You know, I think it's it, it gives maximum exposure, but it also, you know, sends the need in, or the want in many directions. Yeah, you know? and the taste of the generations that have come in more recent years is different. It is different. I mean, um, uh, you know, I don't want to say it was commercialized, but just the fact that Hawaiian music was morphed into some big band sounds, hapahali, you know, English words, you know, you know, to the different strums. Um, it was a way to get it out there and to build interest in Hawaiian music. And, you know, from that time, you know, people started yearning and searching for a little bit more. I, I'd like to think that's what um, encouraged the whole Hawaiian music renaissance movement was, you know, guys my age, maybe even a little older at that time, took interest to the basic music sound and kind of wanted to go back beyond the 30s and find out a little bit more about... You mean earlier? Early, yes, earlier. Sort of a nostalgic view. Go back to where it began, you know, and start yeah. getting into the chants, getting into the language, yeah. getting into 
the core of uh, Hawaiian song. We're talking about the middle of the 19th century. Possibly, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And even that, the traditional Hawaiian songs were somewhat subdued. I mean, if you know your Hawaiian history, uh, it was discouraged, you know, for families to speak Hawaiian, sure. promote Hawaiian, you know, back in the turn of the century, yeah. you know, going to maybe even to the 30s. Yeah. So it was there, but not really mainline, you know, yeah. and- It was suppressed, actually. Yeah. yeah. You can call it suppressed, but yeah, maybe that's the right word, but it just wasn't out there enough. So, you know, guys like me and people around my generation, we go ask questions, we find out. And we, 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 we take an interest in an older type of cultural music that we used to, and we apply it to where we are at that time. You know, a little bit more chord progressions, a little bit more guitar stuff, and we make it interesting first maybe for us, but then boom you know, catches yeah. fire. Because yeah. people might think it's something new, but you know, the core is still the basic Hawaiian, you know, stories. It's yeah. a statement of the, uh, of the Hawaiian identity. It, maybe in some ways it is the Hawaiian identity. Maybe, you know, maybe if, you, if you're from that time and you know, or from the time soon after, you have a point that you can focus on. I'm sure people who are, you know, much older than me, they focus beyond that, you know. Um, but for whatever it works, it's worth it kind of you know give it a shot yeah. kind of give it a booster shot yeah. you know got the interest out there yeah. and then it, it kind of like multiplied it went multiple directions you know it, it got people interested in language in culture in traditional practices in starting immersion schools you know it, it, there's a lot of things that that maybe it didn't you can't take full credit for but it was all happening yeah. And happening. the music is somehow the backbone of all of that. I think so. Yeah. I think the music and the promotion of the culture and the arts and the chants it was always there. Yeah. Yeah. So you talk about um, you know the people getting older and just in a recent what month or two there's been a number of deaths among you know traditional uh, Hawaiian musicians. Can you talk about that? Um, yeah. I mean, good friends you know over the years have made their notch in Hawaiian music. Um, you know, um, close friends, friends that I've had you know, chances to share the, not only the stage on, but just be part of their everyday lives. And everybody gets old, you know, <laughs> everybody. We heard it here on Think Tank. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but, you know, things happen. Um, but with I, their passing, well, how what, does that I, change? You things? know, with their, everything is somewhat finite in the human life, right? So yeah. what you look at is what they, the messages and the legacy that they left, you know, and, and that's that's what you hang on to. You know, you, you look at the talents of, you know, the Casimiro family, beyond just the two brothers, you know, Tutsi and everybody else, very talented, yeah. will leave their mark on Hawaiian music and music in general forever, you yeah. know. So, so you appreciate that, you take that, you know, and you, you try to you know, nurture it so it, it just doesn't go away, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you have to do to, uh, and you, you mentioned that as things change, the music changes, mm -hmm. but subject to its basic core, its cultural core. But what do you have to do to keep up? You know, like the Kaz I, I feel the Kazamara brothers were keeping up. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were moving ahead, they were changing with the times, they were innovative, mm -hmm. as the Peter Moon band, innovative, and so, you always have, have to be thinking about um, how to uh, incorporate uh, other other uh, musical trends into your music. Uh, tell me about the Peter Moon Band. Tell me about the Casimeros and the others. How they did that. You know, from from a, a business outlook. You know, if you're gonna do this, you know, you're gonna take your talents and try to get it out there and, and try to create a business out of that. You you really have to try to understand who's listening and what they're willing to listen to, you know, you can't be so creative that you take yourselves out from between the lines. You know, I think um, for us, for Peter Moon Band, um, there was a balance of trying out new music, yet still keeping the Hawaiian tradition. All of our recordings that we've done, um, every album had a different genre of song, but it always had the traditional Hawaiian music. So when you when you pushing your recording, when you're pushing your album, you're still pushing the core, yeah. what started you. 
And then you're testing, you know, the, these different genres or types of music that you enjoy or yeah. that you think the market might enjoy. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I credit the Sunday Manoa, you know, the genius of Peter Moon and the talents of Robert and Roland, you know, for, for making it very interesting, even for guys like me, you know, to, oh, I, I like that sound. And then, oh, they're singing Hawaiian, chi. My mom knows why, and I should go talk to her about that. <laughs> this is your own experience. This is my own experience, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then, you know, So you oh, kind of backed into it somehow, yeah? <laughs> whether or not that was the case for everybody, that's what happened to me. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I, like, I like the sound, I like the music, yeah. I like the interest. I started buying up albums, you know, that I normally wouldn't be interested in at the time. Yeah. And I started just not necessarily sitting down and learning it, but just getting immersed in it so that it just becomes part of you. Yeah. You know? yeah, but it's not the same kind of experience that you would have at Juilliard. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that here. On <clears throat> I mean, uh, a lot of this is self-taught. <clears throat> it's based on emulating sounds that you like to hear. Uh, it's not necessarily reading classical style, reading music. Mm -hmm. it's, it's feeling music mm -hmm. and expressing that. Right? Yeah. Is that is that your experience? That is my experience. <clears throat> you know, um, yeah, and you were pretty much self-taught. You know. Um, you took interest because you enjoyed the sound, you enjoyed the music, and then from that, you know, if you wanted to push the envelope and learn a little bit more, then you got serious. Then, you know, guys, you know, take music. Or guys already knew music, but couldn't put the pieces together, you know. So there was a combination of Juilliard grads <laughs> that, you know, picked up the ukulele and figured out, hey, you know, this, I can music. do this. Real yeah. music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Let's take a short break. That's Bobby Hall. He's an original member of the Peter Moon Band, and, and through him we learn about Hawaiian music and its, its arc, if you will. We'll be right back after yeah. this break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope. Make this world a little better. So try a little more, more than ever before. Okay, we're talking about Hawaiian music. We're talking about its past, its present, and its future. This is Bobby Hall, an original member of the Peter Moon Band, who I love when he plays. He's going to play some more for us. But, you know, I went last night to Honey's. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of, yeah. <clears throat> yeah I love that music. Uh, you know, it's part of... It's part of who, was, who, who, who was playing it? Was it Leber? I, oh. I didn't know. The oh, okay. two, two guys. Okay. One was slightly falsetto, and... Uh, was, Dark glasses and all this. Uh, I think so, that was Ledward, Ledward Kalpana. I think that's right. It yeah. was. It was Ledward Kalpana. Yeah. Yeah. He's anyway. a neighbor. We, we live kind of close by play to each together? other. Kanye. Yeah. Play together, yeah. Um, had a chance to yeah. play with him um, yeah. early years when he was with his brother and um, Dennis Pavao, both yeah. of which passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got we to gotta keep this alive. I mean, it's not just for the musicians. It's not just for the Native Hawaiian people. Mm -hmm. It's for everybody. It's, mm -hmm. it's core stuff for the whole life in this state. And there are a lot of issues about how you do that, how you, for example, who promotes it. I was mentioning before the hotels used to, but they don't anymore. Mm -hmm. Now you have to find a promoter or be a promoter to promote yourself into a hotel. Um, and I, I, I'm interested in your views about who should do what. Um, the, the music industry, mm -hmm. business in general, HTA, Hawaii Tourism Authority, the government, Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Everybody benefits by, by preserving this, this strain of, of culture, this core strain of culture. Who do you think should take the, the fore on this? Who should be active and what should they do? All of the above. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and seriously, if, if you're from a 
tourism perspective, if, if you're promoting Hawaii, then promote it all the way. You know, understand, you know, how the industry grew. Understand that the first people that came here as part of a tourist industry, you know, they came here for a vision. They came here for a concept. It might have been the richer people, but they came here for X. And, you know, and nowadays, it's, you can market whatever that X is. You know, you can market um, ecotourism. You can market luau's. You can market, you know, um, marathons. You can market a whole bunch of things to get the hotel rooms filled. So market music. Music. Market music. And, and while it's no one person's responsibility, um, if I was to look across the ocean and look at Japan and look at how much interest they've taken in the Hawaiian music and how much they import local Hawaiian artists, local hula halau instructors, you know, local kumu hulas who've established their own halals there in Japan, I'm like, okay, they're doing it. <laughs> There's an interest, and it's not an overwhelming interest. It's not everybody in Japan, you know, knows the word aloha or whatever. But there's a concept. There's a vision. You know, they still want to come to Hawaii to get married and take the picture on the beach in 98 degrees sun. You know, <laughs> but hey, you know, look at that more than just an opportunity for a tourism dollar. Yeah. Look at the reason why they're doing that is because it's Hawaii. Yeah. It's here. You know, respect what we have to offer, don't overindulge it, you know, I mean. Or over-commercialize it. Over-commercialize it. Yeah. Um, as far as the, how the Hawaiian musician is portrayed, there's a lot of guys playing music in Waikiki. I would, I would say it's a grind, you know, for them. But they have their venues, there are certain hotels that set up, you know, opportunities to play. And, you know, a lot of them play, you know, what they enjoy playing, um, but they also, you know, have to cater to, you know, the market, who's ever sitting in front of them. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that we can't have just like a venue, not necessarily out there in Laie, you know, where, where they're making... Great it, fun there. Yeah. They're making, a, they're, it's marketed well and it's yeah. done well. Yeah. You know, something similar right smack dab in Waikiki, you know. You remember the rooftop in the Hawaiian region? It's a few years oh, ago yeah. already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're show used to do stuff from there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of compila all day. All yeah. night, you know, the, I mean, there, there are venues, don't get me wrong, and, and I don't know all the venues, you know, sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a frequent person to Waikiki <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Hard to go there now. I, I don't know all the venues available, but, you know, I would like to think that if there was just a way to showcase, you know, locally, without having to go through all the expense and a promotion, just put it up there, you yeah. know. And whether you whether you break even or not, just put it out there. Right. You know, I give the what what the people in Japan are seeing on a regular basis and willing to pay for and fly in. You know, do something here. Yeah. You know, it's a giving thing. It's, it's, it doesn't matter about the money. That's, you just give. And, that's how things get, were always and should always be. Yes, I agree. It's yeah. part of the music, isn't it? Well, it's part of being you know a local person. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what aloha means. So what? But what, what, is there? Is there, what is the level of interest by local people? And I mean, everybody living here, really, mm -hmm. uh, for Hawaiian music. Uh, how can we stir them up? For example, if we had a, a kind of kapila on the rooftop of the, of the uh, region, Hawaii region, which doesn't exist anymore, um, how could we get them down there? Should we get them down there? Should we make an effort? To, would it be useful to have everybody come down there? You know, I think you have to look at the different um, age groups and generations and genres of music. Um, you know, I, I can't see, you know, people my age rushing down to a, you know, hopping reggae concert, you know, right. <laughs> something like that. And, and no offense against that music. Um, when I have the opportunity to play, you know, with friends and we do private gigs or even some commercial gigs, what we bring is what, you know, people maybe my, my generation or after me don't get to listen to. Yeah. And they yearn for that. Yeah. And they're willing to come out and see that because it reminds them of a point in time when they were, you know, uh, happy with the music, happy with themselves. Yeah. Takes them back. Yeah. You know, maybe you go 20 years you know, younger, my age, there's a different attraction point that brings there, but it's there. And it's a matter of 
lining up those different attraction points, genres, because the musicians today vary from like my age all the way to right out of high school. You know, but there is a delineating line that ties us all like a lay, you know, to our Hawaiian music. It's you play a simple chord or you can play a progressive chord. You're gonna sing a simple harmony solo, you're gonna sing four part, or you're gonna do three with a drum band. It's the same song. Yeah. You you mentioned the core is always there. Mm -hmm. And we need to have that. But um, you know, the what do you want to call it? The uh, the rapper mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> has to change because people change, because mm -hmm. their tastes change. Yeah. Not only here, but it, even in Japan and certainly on the mainland. Mm -hmm. and we have to somehow follow that so we don't niche ourselves out of the larger market that mm -hmm. would be beneficial to the musicians and to the state in general. So how do we do that? I mean, for example, why was uh, his and um, his, his great song, the... Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to sing it. Somewhere right. over the rainbow, yeah. Over the rainbow, yeah. you know, uh, which they sang last night at Honey's, by the way. Oh. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure it's, it's, it's taken on a Hawaiian, you know, patina on it. <clears throat> but uh, that, that was a change. You take a song that's not Hawaiian at all, and then somehow you inject Hawaiian-ness into it, and now you have a song that appeals from here to Romania, right? <clears throat> we have to do things like that, don't we? Well... You got to look at the ambassador who did that. Israel is a special, unique person. Just his voice is like a magnet. Yeah. You know, indeed. And you know, he he basically recorded that song, him and his ukulele. You know, and because that's what he felt. Yeah. I don't think he had any intention of trying to target a market, or trying to you know make a worldwide sale, or you know reach somebody in Greece. I don't think he had any of that intention. It's just the pureness of his sound. The pureness of his simple, you know, music that, that got people attracted. And it was an English song. People recognized the song. Yeah. And, you know, it took a few promoters to drop it here in this movie tag and this stuff, and it just went went off. Wow. Now, now the, the ability to do that on a regular basis, I mean, whoever can figure that out, you know, yeah. they can make some <laughs> good commercial money. But, you know, it's it's possible. It's possible, but you got to try you got to try to get it out there. And maybe, maybe you know, these venues in Japan or, you know, Hawaii is finally get, getting a category or getting recognized with, under the Grammy. You know, when we were playing music, they wouldn't, you know, we, we weren't even included, on, yeah. on the sheet, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's growing. The exposure is getting there. It's just when you're there, you know, how do you kind of draw it back so everybody at, at home can kind of, you know, uh, Possibly, you know, move along with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, in the case of his, you know, a lot of this had to do with Leah Bernstein, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she, she and her team there promoted it. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it? What's the name of the record company? I can't. Well, with John DiMello. John Apple DiMello. Music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you need people like that to, mm -hmm. to you know, take it and present it to you the do. world. You, yeah. you need a you need a combination of you know the marketing talent, and you know the promotion and the business. You need the talent. You still need the talent. There's yeah. a lot of talent here. Yeah, there is a lot of talent here. Always. So we're talking to you. Talk to the talent for Talk a minute, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but tell them what they should do. Um, no, I, 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 I'm not one to, you know, give that kind of advice. I can tell you from my journey, and you know, it's a matter of uh, looking at who you're singing to whether you're an audience of one or you're an audience of 100,000, it's making that experience memorable for them yeah. because that's what's going to perpetuate your art. Yeah. Um, don't go on stage and, you know, I'm not, I might be condescending, but don't go on stage like, yeah, these guys paying to see me. I, I think I'll whip out a few chords and, you know, I really don't want to be here. <laughs> you know, you have to appreciate the God-given gift you, that you have is, is called talent. And, and the way to do that is share it. You know, whether it's for compensation or just applause. Yeah. You share it, you embrace your audience, you, you basically you know, put yourself out there, and um, it'll come back. It'll sync with somebody in the audience. It'll grow in somebody's memory. And that's what, that's what it takes to perpetuate. Yeah, thank you, Bobby, again. Can you play some music on the way out for us? Yeah, so, you know, we're talking about old days. So, um, I don't know if I've played this for a long time, but 
I was watching this movie on TV, Elvis movie. Of course, he's part of this whole discussion, isn't he? <laughs> And my 